let's shift focus now to the tech earnings cognizance quarterly results bringing in cheer for the IT sector still reeling from the weak performances by the bellwethers TCS Infosys and Wipro even HCL tech actually this quarter Cognizant has topped expectations on the revenue front, raking in over $2.9 billion against a company guidance of $2.88 billion. Its margins have missed the street view just by a tad. Joining us now to talk about this is Francisco D'Souza, the Chief Executive Officer of Cognizant, uh, joining us live from the NASDAQ studio. Also, I just want to point out that Cognizant, the stock is up about 10% now, crossing a market capitalization of $39.3 billion. Uh, Francisco, appreciate you joining us here on uh, CNBC TV 18, and congratulations on another a very strong quarterly performance. Uh, you know, what are you seeing that's different from your peers at this point in time? Because the commentary and the outlook that's been put out by TCS, Infosys, HCL Tech, and Wipro continues to be fairly cautious at this point in time. What is the outlook that you're seeing both in terms of demand and pricing? Shireen, great to be here. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. Look, uh, we had a great quarter. Uh, revenue was up 6% um, sequentially. Um, and would have been up uh, uh, another point if it had not been for the currency headwind. So a very strong quarter. Uh, what we're seeing in the market, Shireen, is a very, very strong demand from our clients uh, for technology-enabled digital transformation. Uh, the digital wave that's, um, um, that's upon us is a once-in-a-decade um, uh, real transformation in the technology landscape. And our clients are all looking to, uh, to Cognizant to say, how do you help us transform uh, based on these new digital technologies? So we feel very, very good about how we're positioned in the marketplace on the back of this demand. Uh, a quick question, uh, Francisco, on your acquisitions, because Trizetto and the Cadient acquisition, uh, the integration, of course, is underway. And I believe that the outlook that you have in terms of revenue synergies is on track at this point in time, especially as far as Trizetto is concerned. Uh, you had forecasted generating $1.5 billion in dollars, uh, dollar terms in terms of revenue synergies. Uh, what more can we expect now in terms of the acquisition front? You continue to sit on a fair amount of cash on your books. You know, we're, we're very pleased with how um, our acquisitions have performed, uh, both in the digital space with acquisitions like um, Cadient and Odyssey and ITAS, um, and also uh, in the healthcare space with, uh, with Trizetto. Trizetto has been off to a, a, a good, solid start. Uh, a little faster than we expected, which is great. Uh, we're seeing uh, fantastic demand from clients for the inter integrated value proposition that uh, Cognizant and Trizetto together represent. Uh, so we feel very good about um, the acquisitions that we've done in the recent past and uh, their ability to really add value um, for our clients and for our shareholders. Uh, as we look forward, we, um, as we've said in the past, we'll continue to look at small tuck-in acquisitions to bolster our capabilities. Uh, particularly in the digital technology area, but also looking at areas like new geographies that we're looking to expand into and also deepening capabilities in certain areas. Uh, we'll continue to do that, and we've got a very strong acquisition pipeline at the moment. You've said that you have a strong acquisition pipeline, and this will continue to follow your tuck-in uh, approach, uh, Francisco. Uh, could you give us more color in terms of the geographies that you are currently looking at? And also on the digital space, uh, can we expect announcements fairly soon? You know, we have um, a, a pipeline at all times of acquisitions that we look at. We look um, at, as I said, new technologies, particularly at this point in the digital space. Uh, we're looking at new geographies uh, across Asia. We're looking at Latin America at this point uh, in terms of our geographical footprint that uh, we want to uh, bolster. Uh, and also we're looking at deepening, deepening capabilities in areas like consulting and so on. And so um, that, that pipeline continues to be strong, robust, as, it, as it's always been. We're always looking at, uh, at candidates that, um, that make sense for the company. Uh, and I expect that over the course of this year, you'll see us, um, you'll see us uh, uh, doing a couple of ad additional acquisitions uh, in the small tuck-in category. OK, you're seeing a couple of additional acquisitions in this year. Uh, Francisco, a quick word as far as the margins are concerned, because I understand that pricing has been relatively stable for you. But what is the outlook on the margins front? Because that, I can't even call it a disappointment, but that's the only place where you miss the street's expectations or estimates. Well, you know, um, we, um, uh, our operating margin for the quarter, our non-GAAP operating margin for the quarter was, was within the, uh, our target range of 19 to 20 percent. In fact, it was at the high end uh, of our range. Uh, we, uh, we outperformed our, our EPS guidance and actually uh, took our uh, full-year EPS, uh, non-GAAP EPS guidance up uh, by two cents a share. 
Uh, so we feel very comfortable with where we are on margins at this point. We feel like we can uh, deliver the full year uh, within Cognizant's target uh, operating margin uh, of 19 to 20 percent on a non-GAAP basis. So, um, you know, uh, overall we feel like we can make the investments that we need to make in the business uh, to grow the business and still deliver the 19 to 20 percent operating margin. Uh, could you do better than the guidance because uh, you know you've upped your guidance to reflect the overperformance during the first quarter Francisco but on the back of the acquisitions or the potential acquisitions that you're looking at and also the demand environment do you believe that maybe there is room for you to actually better well look um, our guidance doesn't uh, include any um, uh, um, any future potential acquisitions that we would do obviously it wouldn't be prudent of us to forecast um, uh, acquisition revenues or, or results in our in our current guidance, uh, since none of those have um, uh, have been finalized. Sure. Uh, but that, as, you know, we feel point. very very good, Shireen, about demand. We feel very good about how we're positioned in the marketplace, and uh, you know I think that as we look to the rest of the year, uh, as um, uh, we continue to work with uh, with clients, um, you know it's certainly possible that uh, you know we could do a little bit better than what we've uh, currently um, uh, forecast, but. Uh, our best forecast right now is the revised guidance that we provide, uh, provided. But there is room, and you're uh, acknowledging that there is room to do better on that. But uh, Francisco, a quick word as far as healthcare is concerned, because that over the years uh, uh, has gone up about 42.7 percent. I'm given to understand, uh, and infrastructure, you've actually crossed the one billion run rate mark as far as the infrastructure side of your business is concerned. Uh, how much better can you can you do on on both those fronts and both those parameters? You know, uh, healthcare. Uh, our results in healthcare uh, are very strong, but uh, were driven uh, on a year-over-year -year basis uh, by the uh, the Trizetto acquisition. So you have to account for the fact that some of that growth was was inorganic. But we feel very good about how we're positioned in healthcare. The Trizetto acquisition has been um, in in um, uh, since we've done the acquisition, we've seen great demand from our clients on. Uh, uh, on the integrated value proposition. And on the infrastructure side, Chirin, we've said for some time that uh, the services like infrastructure management, like business process services, like our business consulting services, each of those has the potential, we think, to be a multi-billion dollar opportunity for Cognizant. I'm very happy that infrastructure services crossed the $1 billion revenue run rate mark uh, in, the, in the quarter. Uh, we think that that has significant additional upside, um, as do the other service offerings like business process services and uh, our consulting business. You know, in terms of headwinds, uh, uh, Francisco, besides the currency challenge, uh, what else would you regard as risks at this point in time? You know, I, I would say that um, the, uh, you know, we are in a once-in-a-decade shift in the technology landscape. Um, we feel that we are very, very well positioned uh, as that technology landscape change unfolds. Um, and I think that our opportunity is to continue to make sure that we're making the right investments uh, to continue to capitalize on, on that opportunity. All right, Francisco, we'll uh, have to leave you. Uh, appreciate you joining us here on India Business Hour. Congratulations once again uh, for, a, for another stellar performance this quarter from Cognizant. The stock, as I pointed out, up by almost 10%, crossing the $39 billion mark in terms of market capitalization. I think that's more than...